Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about the core nilpotent decomposition, which is an important building block towards the Jordan canonical form. We have matrix A, which is square of size n by n. The index of A is equal to k. The index is a non-negative integer. If A is an invertible matrix, its index is equal to zero. Otherwise, the index is greater than or equal to one. What is the significance of the index of the matrix? Defining A to the power zero as the identity of size n by n. As we raise A to higher and higher powers, the null space expands till we reach the null space of A to the power k, which is the index of A. Afterwards, the null space stays the same. The range shrinks till we reach the range of A to the power k. Afterwards, the range stays the same. The n-dimensional space can be written as a direct sum of the null space of A to the k and the range of A to the k. These two guys have the trivial intersection, only the all zero vector. And every n-dimensional vector can uniquely be expressed as the sum of two vectors, one in the null space of A to the k and the other in the range of A to the k. Before we proceed, let's remind ourselves of the following fact. Suppose that we start with vector x in the null space of A to the j. A to the j times x is the O0 vector. Multiply both sides by A. Then A to the j plus 1 x is the O0 vector. Write down this A to the j plus 1 as A to the j times A. Then we have A to the j between brackets AX. This product is the O0 vector, thereby indicating that AX is in the null space. If we start with vector x in the null space of A to the j, then A times x is also in the null space of A to the j. What if we start with vector x in the range of a to the j? This implies that there exists vector y such that a to the j times y is equal to x. If we multiply both sides from the left by a, we get a to the j plus one y is equal to a x. Same thing, I can write this down as a to the j times a y is equal to a x. Vector a x can be expressed as a to the j times a column vector. A x can be written as a linear combination of the columns of a to the j. A x is in the range of a to the j. If x is in the range of a to the j, so is a times x. Suppose that small r is the rank of a to the k, and k is the index of matrix a. The n-dimensional space is the direct sum of these two subspaces. The dimension of the range of a to the k is this r. Suppose that the vectors q1, q2, all the way to qr constitute a basis for the range of a to the power k. And qr plus 1, qr plus 2, all the way to qn, these vectors constitute a basis for the null space of A to the K. Recall that by the rank nullity theorem, the dimension of the range of A to the K, which is the rank of A to the K plus the dimension of the null space is exactly equal to N. We have R vectors in this set and N minus R vectors in that set. Now we have invertible matrix Q. Its first R columns are denoted by the N by R matrix Q1. Those are those vectors here from Q1 to QR. Then from QR plus one to QN, those are the columns of matrix Q2 of size N by N minus R. Q is an N by N square matrix that is invertible by the definition of a basis. Let Q inverse be partitioned into an upper R by N matrix denoted by U and a lower N minus R by N matrix denoted by V. By definition, Q inverse Q is the N by N identity matrix. This is Q inverse and this is Q. We have the following results. U Q1 is the identity matrix of size R by R. U Q2 is equal to the O0 matrix of size R by N minus R, which means that every column in Q2, that is any one of those vectors, is in the null space of matrix U. We also have that V Q1 is the O0 matrix of size N minus R by R. All those vectors are in the null space of matrix V. Finally, V Q2 is equal to identity of size N minus R by N minus R. Let's examine this quantity after inserting A between Q inverse and Q. That is, we study now Q inverse A times Q. Q inverse is this. And when we multiply A by Q, the first R columns are A Q1. Then the remaining N minus R columns are A Q2. Recall our result from here. If a vector is in the null space, A times that vector is also in the null space. And if the vector is in the range, A times that vector is also in the range. So what do we have here? We have A, Q1, A, Q2, all the way to A, Q, R. The vectors Q1 to Q, R, together they are a basis for the range of A to the power K. Every one of those vectors is a vector that is in the range of A to the power K. When 
we multiply V by A Q1, we should get the all zero matrix of size N minus R by R because every vector in the basis for the range of A to the K is in the null space of V. When we multiply Q1 by A, we get those new vectors, but each one of them is also in the range of A to the power K. Each one of them can be written as a linear combination of the vectors from Q1 to QR, and those vectors are in the null space of V. When we do this product, V times A Q1 will give us this block of zeros. Similarly, A Q2, this is A QR plus one all the way to A QN. QR plus one to QN, those together constitute a basis for the null space of A to the power K. When we multiply those vectors by A, we get vectors, all of which are in the null space of A to the power K. Each one of those vectors can be written in terms of those vectors from QR plus one to QN. When we multiply by U from the left, then using this property here, that every vector in this set is in the null space of U, we get this block of zeros. The idea is that Q inverse AQ is a block diagonal matrix. The upper left block is this R by R matrix C, which is U A Q1, and the lower right matrix L is a square matrix of size N minus R by N minus R, and is given by V times A times Q2. Using matrix Q, which contains a basis for the R dimensional range of A to the K and the N minus R dimensional null space of A to the K, we are able to block diagonalized matrix A. Note that K is not an arbitrary integer. K is the index of A. To derive our result, we are mainly exploiting this fact here. Let's now try to understand more about the C matrix and the L matrix. Suppose that we raise both sides here to the power K. The right-hand side will be a block diagonal matrix. Here we have C to the power K of size R by R, and here we have L to the power K of size N minus R by N minus R. What about the left-hand side? This is Q inverse AQ times Q inverse AQ times Q inverse AQ, and we do this K times. These two are identity, these two are identity, and so on, and we end up with Q inverse, then A to the power K, then Q. A to the power K times Q is A to the power K times Q1. These are the first R columns. Recall that small r is the rank of A to the power K, and K is the index of matrix A. Then we have A to the power K, Q2. Q2 has columns that are QR plus 1 all the way to QN, and those are a basis for the null space of A to the power K. This means that those N minus R columns, all of them are zeros. When we multiply A to the K by Q2, from the left, we get a block of zeros with size n by n minus r. Then if we multiply this by q inverse, we get this matrix here, q inverse a to the k, q1, and then this block of zeros. But this matrix and this matrix are equal. This is very significant because what this means is that this L to the power k matrix, which is a square of size n minus r by n minus r, is indeed an all zero matrix. Matrix L is an important matrix because there is a power k such that L to the k is the all zero matrix. One of the implications of being a nil potent matrix is that all the eigenvalues of L are equal to zero. Consequently, both the trace and determinant are equal to zero. We called the rank of A to the k small r. The rank of A to the k is the rank of Q inverse A to the k Q. This is because pre or post multiplication by an invertible matrix does not change the rank. So the rank of A to the k is equal to the rank of Q inverse A to the KQ. As a reminder, this comes from this relationship here between the rank of XY, these are two matrices multiplied together. The rank of XY is the rank of Y minus the dimension of the null space of matrix X intersection the range of Y. If X is an invertible matrix, then its null space contains only the O0 vector. Then the dimension of this subspace is equal to zero and the rank of XY is equal to the rank of Y. If we multiply Y by an invertible matrix X from the other side, assuming of course that the sizes are compatible, then also we end up with the rank of Y. The rank of A to the K is the rank of this product. And this product looks like this. We have N minus R columns that are all zero. And then we have those first R columns. The rank of this matrix is the rank of C to the K. In other words, the rank of C to the K is equal to R. But C to the K is an R by R matrix. This means that C is a full rank square matrix. C is an invertible matrix with a rank equal to small r, which is the dimension of the range of A to the K. 
so far our results are that Q inverse AQ is this block diagonal matrix C and L, and then blocks of zeros. We have discovered that L is nilpotent and that C is an R by R invertible matrix. The last point to study is the nilpotent index of L. This is the smallest positive integer, call it J, such that L to the J is the all zero matrix. The claim is that the nilpotent index of L is equal to K, which is the index of matrix A. And we can show this by contradiction. Suppose that there exists positive integer J strictly less than K, such that L to the J is the all zero matrix. Now, study Q inverse A to the J Q. Like what we did above, this will be equal to C to the J, and then here we have L to the J, and then blocks of zeros. What is the rank of A to the J? It is the same as the rank of Q inverse A to the J times Q. By assumption, L to the J is the all zero matrix. So those N minus R columns are equal to zero. And the rank of this matrix is the rank of C to the J. If this assumption is true, the rank of A to the J is equal to the rank of C to the J. But C is a full rank invertible matrix with rank R. So the rank of C to the J is equal to R. The rank of A to the J is equal to R. Now this is problematic because the index of matrix A is K, which is strictly superior to J. If we study the column space of the powers of A, then we have the following containment for the ranges of the powers of A. The range of A to the J strictly contains the range of A to the K. Because K is the index and J is strictly less than K, then the rank of A to the J must be strictly greater than the rank of A to the K, which is a small r. If we assume that the nilpotent index of L is J strictly less than K, then we will contradict this fact that the rank of A to the J is strictly greater than the rank of A to the K. Indeed, the nilpotent index of L is K, which is the index of matrix A.